In the meantime, I'll be in Hebrews 5. Hebrews chapter 5. <clears throat> Hebrews 5, I'm going to read verses 10 through 14 to start off, and then we'll be wandering around the scriptures here. It says, Called of God uh, and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things um, to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing that ye are, ye are dull of hearing. For when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, uh, which be the first principles, the oracles of God. And become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth unto them that are of full age, even to them who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. I want to talk today about uh, skillful or unskillful in the word. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the chance to preach on it. Thank you, Lord, that it answers the question. It gives us what to teach. It changes lives. It is quick and powerful, as the chapter before this tells us, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, even to this dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature not manifest that's not manifest in his sight. It's powerful, Lord. We thank you that we have the Bible as we preach on it tonight, I pray you would help us to become um, skillful in the word and use this message in our lives. Thank you for the chance to preach the Bible. Speak to us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Um, we see that uh, um, the author of Hebrews, I, I'm 95% sure it's Paul. Um, it's the only letter Paul doesn't say, but um, whoever it is uh, mentions everybody around Paul except for Paul. And, uh, and writes like Paul and uses the same analogies as Paul. A lot of reasons, I think, that uh, Paul was an earthly person. Of course, we know it was written by the Holy Spirit. But the author here says, I want to teach you more about Melchizedek. It's very deep. But he says, I can't, t I can't go there. I can't teach you that because you are dull of hearing. You're not able to handle it. You can't go there. You, don't, you won't be able to understand the depth of Melchizedek, which was a pre-incarnate uh, appearing of Jesus. And... Uh, uh, to Abraham, and it's very deep in heaven. He just, he just kind of stops in the middle of his teaching, teaching, getting deeper and deeper, and he says, uh, verse uh, 10, he says, of uh, um, uh, called of God, a priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing you're dull of hearing, for when you ought to be teachers, you have need one teach you again the first principles. He says, you're not ready for this. I, I thank God last a couple Sunday nights, I've preached pretty heavy messages and I'm thankful we have a church that can handle that. Not a lot of churches uh, nowadays, I mean, they're just used to shallow, simple, just, you know, be happy in Jesus messages, you know, and, uh, and uh, they can't handle um, depth and, and deeper things. And you can't go there if the people can't handle it. And, uh, and I'm thankful that uh, many of you have a, a, a deep and a growing knowledge of the Word of God. I was... Uh, I was working um, construction. I was working a, a union construction job. I was just, uh, I think I was 18 years old, and uh, I was the apprentice. And uh, there was, you know, some journeymen there that were really skilled. I remember I was, I can, I've done construction a lot of times, and I can pound a nail pretty well. And I could then, but, you know, not as good as I can now, but certainly I could pound a nail. And I was walking by, and I was watching this journeyman, and he was up uh, doing some pounding of nails. And he had these big, you know, 20-penny 20 pe 20 nails. I mean, these, these are, you know, good-sized nails. And uh, I was watching him, and he was going like this. Tap, sink. Tap, sink. Tap, sink. One, one hit, he was tapping the nail in. The next one, he's sinking all the way down. I'm watching that going. That's pretty hard to do. That takes some skill. I mean... If, if you're not good at it, no matter what you do, you're going tap, 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 e -e 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 -e. and, uh, and, uh, and, and you're doing that. But this guy is a big nail, and he's tap, sink. And I just watched him, I just watched him like 20 nails that way, and I'm just watching him going. And this is before a lot of people had nail guns, right? I thought, that's impressive. How many nails has this guy driven? You know, but you know one day when he started out, you know what he did? 
ding, 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 because he didn't start off doing that. It took some time. It took some time. What are you skilled at? What, do you, what, what can you say, you know what, I'm really good at this? Not because you're bragging. I'm just saying you just, by hard work and by gift, by whatever reason, you can say, I'm, I'm good at this. We're all good at something, right? Um, and don't say gossip or something, you know. Um, but, uh, but you can tell me something you're good at. You can say, I'm just good at something. Yes. Teaching. Teaching. Okay. Back here? Driving a semi-truck. All right. Yep. Yep. Fixing cars. Okay. Food service. Okay. Yep. Negotiations. Okay. So you have things you're good at, but you learned it, right? You didn't just start off that way. Yeah. yeah. The first time you do most things, unless you're really gifted, um, and then even if you're gifted, you will be okay. Your average, if you're gifted, the first time you do something, you're average. Okay. And then you'll learn to be great if you, if you work hard at it. And... Uh, <clears throat> But it took some time. You learned a skill. You got better at that uh, than doing that. And, uh, and, 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 and it talks about a skill here. It talks about um, uh, when you ought to be teachers, you have verse, uh, oh, verse 12, you have neither one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and become such as need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. This is an embarrassing thing. It's not a good thing. They should be teachers. Now, there's two problems with this. Number one, they should be teaching somebody else, right? There's a problem there. They're not teaching somebody else. But also, the author of Hebrews, who should be teaching them deeper things, is now teaching them again the basic things. And that is a waste of their time also. Both those things are hindering the cause of Christ. But they're babes. They're babes. You're in need of milk. And that's, that's a criticism. That's a, that's a negative thing that you're unskillful. That you're, you're in need of milk and not meat because you're unskillful in the word and you just haven't, haven't prepared yourself. If, 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 when someone who's an adult, if, if you, went and you invited me to you invited me to say, Pastor, I want to talk to you about some serious things and I want to get some counseling. And so we go to the restaurant and uh, we go there, and we're sitting down, and uh, at the restaurant, um, at the restaurant, so let me figure this thing out here, you sit across from me, and I sit down across from you, and I say, so, uh, tell me about your problem. <laughs> Are you going to be able to take me seriously? What are you ordering today? You order a steak, you order, you know, your fish and chips, and this guy orders a burger, and I, I say, I, I don't need any, I'm good. <laughs> no pictures. And, uh, right? I'm sitting here drinking the bottle, and you're not taking me seriously. Because I'm an adult, and you, I'm, you're supposed to be respecting and trusting me, and I'm drinking a baba. You're not going to take me seriously, right? And you as a Christian who goes to a church like this, who has your own copy of a Bible, and you can read your own Bible, should not be drinking milk when you're an adult. Out of a bottle, like a baby. You should be able to eat a steak, right? You should be able to do that. And so everybody loves that preaching. Everybody should eat a steak. And, uh, and the pastor said, honey, and, uh, and so you, you, uh, you should be doing that. You're unskillful in the word. You need to be taught again the first principles. You're dull of hearing. You're, un, you're unskillful in the word. We need to be skillful in the word of God. We need to know how to use it. We need to know how to, how to rightly divide it. 
We need to know how to both teach a new convert, how to be strong in the Lord, uh, how to overcome their addiction, uh, to go when you talk to the person in the cult and be able to show them what the Bible says and why their doctrine's wrong, to be able to go run into somebody who uh, believes prosperity gospel and is messing up their mind because they're not prospering, and you can show them why prosperity gospel is not true in the Bible, to be able to go and show somebody who says, man, I, I can't seem to stop, you know, uh, listening to my wrong music. It just, it's got a hold of me. Or the person who says, you know, I can't get over my bitterness. And you can say, let me show you what the Bible says. Because the Bible has all the answers. The Bible says it does. The, the Bible says, uh, you know, the Bible is inspired by God. And, and it's proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all all good works the bible has what we need but many people don't know how to tell somebody where the bible says it and you don't and i know you think google can help you find it but google doesn't know the bible very well and 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 you don't know how to ask the question ask the question it doesn't give you the right answer on the spot and 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 you should know your Bible. I wonder about getting skillful in the Bible and how to get skillful in his word. Wouldn't you like to be able to somebody look at you and watch you go and tap, bam, watching. You ever watch a master at something do it? It's just beautiful, no matter what it is almost. It's beautiful to watch a skillful person do something. People should look at you and say, man, that guy, that lady, she knows the Bible. She can always seem to have the answers. They, they can teach me. Wow. Because we need to be that in a, in a biblically illiterate society. The churches, the Christians don't know their Bibles. Okay? And so we need to be skillful in the Word. How can you become skillful in the Word? That's the message tonight. Number one. Um, well, this is number one, get the basics down. We see here in Hebrews chapter 5, get the basics down. Verse 11 it says, of whom we have many things to say unto you, um, and hard to be uttered, seeing you're dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you need one that one teach you again, which be, the, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and become such as have need of milk and not of strong drink. Now the word here, it says it's, someone ought to be teach you again. You should be teachers, but someone needs to teach you again that stuff. And, and because you are, have not gotten it down. You don't have the basics down. You need the first principles again. Okay? He doesn't want to teach it. Chapter 6, he starts off saying, let, let us move on to perfection. I'd like to, I'd like to teach you where we can complete you. We can't get you there yet. You know, we can't, we can't teach you algebra. We can't teach you uh, a, a trade. We can't teach you that stuff. Because you're still in 2 plus 2. You still don't know what a verb and a noun are. You're still, you're still stuck. And so we got to teach you basic stuff. I know you want to get onto this, but you're not ready for that. Part of that, there's a big part of that, is, they, 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 is, is you, you've got to um, listen and use it properly. It says, verse 13, it says, For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth unto them that are of full age, even those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. They used it. How many of you took Spanish in high school? Raise your hand. How many didn't use it and do not speak Spanish because you didn't use it? Okay, right? If you'd have used it, you probably would have retained it. You, you, you probably could have retained it. But uh, there, there, are, there are children of immigrants... I meet them oftentimes. They said, I spoke when I was a little tiny kid. My parents stopped speaking it to me and I never spoke it again. And I really, I'd have to relearn it. Why? Didn't use it. Last time you used it was you were six years old. And now you, you can understand some, but you don't speak Spanish really anymore. Why? You don't speak your language anymore because you didn't use it. And when you don't use the Bible, and you don't live it. You start forgetting it. You start not being changed. A growing Christian retains way more than a Christian who just listen and getting out of there. When you use it, you grow in it. Let's go to First uh, Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three. <clears throat> 
and verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as a cardinal, even unto, as unto babes in Christ. By the way, notice the picture here. It sounds like the same person talking, right? <laughs> uh, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither are ye now able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not yet, are ye not yet carnal and walk as men? Look, you're in petty things. And you, so you're, you're, not, you're not ready for meat. You're carnal. Look, you're, you're, you're still struggling with idolatry and fornication. I would love to give you something deeper, but if you're bowing down to idols, it's not going to matter if you understand what the little horn is in Daniel. Right? If you, if you can't get fornicating, you don't need to know who the great whore is in Revelation. Okay, you don't need to know uh, 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 about Melchizedek when you are still dishonest in your business dealings. Get the milk down. Live the stuff you've been given. That's the, that's the baby stuff. That's, that's this stuff right here. Right? That's this. But, but that's not what you need. You need to use it. Live it. God already showed you how to overcome your idolatry. You keep going back to your idolatry, and you want God to give you more truth. You've not been faithful in that which is least. So why would God give you more truth? You're not living the truth he gave you. The Bible says you're going back to the beggarly things. And, and you want deep Bible knowledge. You want to know the, the mysteries of the Bible, and what are the seven mysteries in Scripture? Pastor, which dispensation are we in? Pastor, tell me, when, during the end time, when the sacrifices are being done at the third temple, is God accepting those sacrifices? It, 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 are, are, they really, are they really accepted by God and they back under the Levitical laws now? You don't need to come to church every Sunday. Let's just start there. Okay? I can talk to you about the deeper things, but you're still, you know, I'm still visiting you in jail. Okay, and let's not let's not go there yet, because you know God can. You told me God can evict me, Pastor, about lying, and you're still lying. You're still stealing, cussing. You're still barely coming to church, and you want to know the deep things of God. You haven't used what you're given yet. Your boss gave you a black and decker. You broke it. And now you're saying, give me a Makita. The boss says, I'm not giving you that. You didn't take care of what I gave you. I want to drive a NASCAR. You can't drive your Toyota. <laughs> so go and use what you have. Live it out. Show God that you appreciate the truth and you're going to live it. Use what you've been given. When God speaks to your heart, respond and make a difference in your life. And that's how you become skillful in the word because they hadn't used it. You're yet carnal. I can't give you meat. You, you need milk again. Milk makes things grow. You just need to grow. Babies just need to grow. That's where you need to start. Same thing. You got to live it out. You learn it and you live it, and then God can give you more. But if you don't do either, don't expect more. And expect to look at the Bible and say, I don't get it. And expect uh, to, to things to go over your head and to expect when you read the Bible, you're not going to grasp great truths. And, and, and you're going to always say, how come they understand the Bible so well? How come they remember it? I just forget everything I hear about the Bible. Yeah. Not using it. Yeah, you learned as a little kid, you forgot about it. Uh, uh, you know, and, and so live it and learn it. Number two, <laughs> this is the most of the message. This is, my, my, this is my thought for three weeks, okay? It's this point, time in the word of God. <laughs> now that didn't sound like rocket science, but it's so important. Let's go to Joshua chapter, chapter one. Let's go there, Joshua chapter one. Time in the word of God. Joshua chapter 1, 
and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, thou shalt meditate therein day and night. We go to Deuteronomy 6. He says, have this posted, these words posted all around your house and his front lips between your eyes and, and, and talk about him when you're walking by the way and when you're sitting down and you rise up, talk about it. It's just all the time. Psalm 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law do he meditate day and night. Time. Time in the Word of God. It emphasizes day and night. It emphasizes meditation. Both in Joshua 1, Psalms 1-2. Let's go to Psalm 119. And meditate in the Word. Think about it. Chew on it. Muse is a Bible word that it uses on it. Have it in your mind all the time. Even things you don't understand, meditate on it. Memorize it. Think about it. Psalm and 119, verse 97. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Through thy uh, commandments, uh, uh, thou through thy commandments has made me, um, um, has made my enemy, uh, ha has made me wiser than mine enemies for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my, than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Look, I am in your word and I am understanding more than my teachers understand. I can just tell you that as a testimony. As I went through Bible college, most of the time I knew more than my teachers about the Bible. Not about ministry, not about other things, but Bible knowledge. Look, I knew more Bible than them before I went to Bible college. Not because I'm a genius but because I spent a lot of time in the Bible. That's why. Spent a lot of time doing anything, you get pretty good at it in most cases. First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Just meditating is, is something it gives you there. First Timothy chapter 4. And verse 15, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly unto them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself under the doctrine and continue in them. For in so doing thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Look, meditate in the Bible all the time. Studying. We're talking about time in the word. We talk about day and night. We talk about meditating. We talk about studying. Second Timothy. In chapter 2 and verse 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. A workman that is not ashamed because you're studying the word of God. You are studying it to show yourself approved. God says, wow, you are a worthy worker. I, I stamp my approval on you because you have studied and you know the word of God. You're a workman. You don't need to be ashamed in what you're doing. You're not saying, oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, oh, man, don't ask me that. Look, I don't understand everything in the Bible. I'm still learning all the time. Um, you could ask me questions and I wouldn't know the answers. But nobody will ask me those questions because you don't, you don't know what they are. And they're very deep questions. And, but you might stump me sometime. You know, you, know what, you know what I do if you stump me? Study. You know when I preach a sermon, you know how often I'm learning? I'm always learning more. I learned today in studying and reviewing this sermon. I learned something. Uh, and I, 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 that surprises me. Remember I was preaching the identity in Christ and there was the kings and priests thing. I learned a lot in that message. About the royal priesthood? I didn't know that. Nobody ever taught that before. I'd never, I'd never heard that. And, 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 and so many things where I'm learning. Why? Because I study. And when you don't know something, look, this is the mind of God. It's too deep for man to understand it all. I've had chapters memorized for decades, every single verse in the chapter, and all of a sudden, I'm like, how did I never see that? Because it's the word of God. 
Study. Study, man. You study things. You watch more YouTube videos. You want to figure out how to do something, man. Read the Bible when you, when, when you want to know. Study it. Search the scriptures and, 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 and study them. <clears throat> Be taught. Hear preaching. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. You know, it's one of the things that will help you learn a lot is, is, is go to a church where they're teaching good doctrine. We see this in Acts chapter 2. And verse 42, it says, They continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. They're getting doctrine at church. It's always a blessing to me. I've had so many new converts in our church who come to me and say, Pastor, I was talking to these people and they were Christians. They've been Christians for a long time. And they said, man, I cannot believe you know this much Bible after you've only been saved one year or whatever. I say, you know, it's a big blessing. That's a, what, a, what a wonderful thing that is. That you know so much Bible already. What a good thing that is, because you're being taught, and you're hearing Bible-filled preaching, and, uh, and, 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 and there's a hunger. Uh, growing creatures develop hunger. Babies, the fastest growing thing, they just double their size all the time, and they're screaming for food and crying for food. And then they get a little bit bigger, and they don't grow quite as much, and they become teenagers and go on a growth spurt. And you're like, you say, forget the spoon, where's the shovel? And because uh, and, and they're so, they're growing, they need more food. Right? I'm talking this growing, not this growing. And, uh, and, and, and they're growing. And growing Christians are hungry for the Bible. This is terrible. When we were teenagers, you know, our, our, our church is a carpenter's union hall. And that was our building. It was like this. And, uh, and so the union hall, the, 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 the union was open, the union hall, but the church offices was locked. But we, uh, Pastor White and I, loved listening to preaching. And Pastor had a whole wall full of cassettes. And there's a tape player in there. And we would, don't tell anybody this, we'd break into the church offices to go listen to preaching. We'd leave before Pastor got back. And uh, we'd listen to sermons. Don't do that here. And, uh, and, uh, and we got the internet, amen? And, and boy, we loved it. We learned and we grew because we were hungering. We are reading. We are studying. And I believe when you start growing and doing things for God, you will, you will want to learn. You'll be drawn to the Bible. You'll get excited about it. Study it. Be taught. 1 Corinthians 1.18, God hath chosen the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And then search the scriptures, Acts chapter 17, since we're there in Acts. Search the scriptures. It's a hunger, it's a search, it's studying. Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. These, the, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they searched the word with all readiness, uh, they received the word, of, uh, word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so, they were searching the Bible every single day. Time in it. You're, you're, you're really spending time. He says, give yourself to reading the scripture. Reading, studying, searching, meditating all the time. Time in the Bible. Okay, probably reverse uh, I've quoted to read so far, and probably, I think, I think there's one in Psalm 119 I didn't have memorized. It's familiar with it. And every verse I'll do the rest of the time. I have all these verses memorized, okay? I didn't memorize all of them. You know why I have them memorized? I don't have the whole Bible memorized or even close, but everything we'll use tonight, I think I remember. You know why? Because I took time to memorize all of them? No. I just spent a lot of time in the Bible, and they just get familiar, Right? You just, after a while, things just get familiar. Look, you can quote scenes from Star Wars and Gilligan's Island, all right? And, and, and your favorite gr show growing up. You can, you can, you, you watched it enough times, right? People got a bunch of the Lord of the Rings memorized. And, and the amount of knowledge they have about weird things, right? Sports statistics and other things that are unbelievable the amount of stuff you have. You know, they can say the horsepower of a, you know, 66 Cobra. <laughs> I 
And they have all kinds of knowledge because you studied stuff. You know, every single word from a song do you listen to way too many times when you're 16 years old. And it's been way too many years, right? And you still have that memorized because you were familiar with it. Spend a lot of time listening to it, right? Spend time in the Word of God. Just spend a lot of time on it, and the answers just come. People ask you. You just start quoting it even though you never memorized it. It's just familiar. Lots of time. Lots of time. Many of many you commented on my amount of Bible knowledge and all those things. And, and, and you know, I, I was, that was happening the first year I was saved. I was teaching already. I was already teaching teenagers. They were coming to me to ask me the Bible. And I didn't know a lot of answers, and I started studying. And I still don't feel like I know the Word of God well. I still have a lot to learn. But in that, in that time, by the time I went to Bible college, I was going to a pastor, and I was saying, Pastor, I have all these adults, and they've been saved 20 years. They're asking me questions about the Bible. Should I answer them, or is that kind of disrespectful? And he says, no, you know more than you know more than anybody in the church except for me. And I'd only been saved two and a half years. Why? I had my New Testament in my pocket all the time. When I had dead time, I'd read my New Testament. I was memorizing two verses every single day. I was studying the scripture. I didn't know the answer to things. Whenever I wanted to know what a doctrine was, I'd memorize every verse in the Bible on that doctrine. I was just, I was preaching twice a week. I was studying for those sermons when I was 17, 18, 19. I was just spending a lot of time in the Bible, a lot of time. When I went to Bible college, a teacher would be up there and he'd be teaching and he'd say, you know, that, that verse, there's a verse somewhere about uh, comparing yourselves among yourselves is not wise. And, and, and where is that? Now, just give them the reference. They'd, the guys would be preaching on the bus and they wouldn't have studied, unfortunately. And they'd say, hey, pastor, where, where's this? He'd be down hiding in the wheel with their Bible. Where's the story of David and Goliath? It's 1 Samuel 17. He'd get up there. Today we're in 1 Samuel 17, like he'd studied five minutes, you know. And, and you know, where's, where's Elijah, the, the prophets of Baal, 1 Kings 18, or whatever. Why? Just familiarity. I already knew a bunch of dumb things that I wasted my time learning. And I wanted to apply myself to learning what mattered. You know where Bible knowledge came from? I'll show you where it came from. It came from that... And that, and that, and that, and that, it's called worn out Bibles. This one here was my, first, well, I've had, I had two other Bibles I used before this one, but they were, they're gone. This one I got recovered. This cover here is like a tire, man, this I thought it, was, it lasted me years and years. I remember one time I put a Bible on top of my car. I was in Chicago, and I was driving, and I looked at my review mirror, and I started out, and it slid off, and it was slide, this Bible was sliding the road, shh, down the road. I picked it up. It looked fine. This, this cover is so tough, but eventually I wore this one out. That was a second cover on this one. You know, just wearing out Bibles will get you a lot of Bible knowledge. And none of these are the ones I use now. But just wearing them out marking them up that is where it's just time and i i could spend more time and and i i want to spend more time today i had some <clears throat> today and again i'm just telling you look i i read a chapter in the morning it was a long chapter and i got that and I always read a bible in the morning but then i i went and then i listened to 10 chapters and then i studied for the sermon now, I'm a pastor. I have time to do that. I don't work. And, uh, and so, um, but uh, I have time to do that. But understand, uh, you know, and, and that's not all I did today. I did construction today also. Spent time with the family. Played a game. I lost um, with the family and stuff. And I'm just saying time in the Bible makes you skillful in the word. Time. And you have time. If you didn't have time, you wouldn't be doing this. Or this. Or this. Or this. Time. Find time. If we said every single day you read your Bible this month, you're going to get $1,000 at the end of the day, you'd find time. Be surprised how much time you have. Just time. 
meditate there in day and night. I have so much to learn. I want to keep studying. I have a lot to learn. I, I, I love it. I meet somebody who knows the Bible better than I do. I want to learn more. I want to learn that. Studying, memorizing, serving, reading. All these things. First Timothy 4.13, we need to read that verse. And then thirdly, if you want to be skillful in the word, you've got to teach it. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Easy to overlook this. A lot of people have this verse memorized. They don't notice something there. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe it according to all that is written therein, for then shalt thou make the way prosperous, and then shalt thou have, good, thou shalt have good success. You know what's cool about that verse? It says, This book of the law... People always think what it says there in the back of their mind, they think, this book of law should not depart out of your mind. That's not what it says. It says out of your mouth. Why? Because you're speaking of it. And it says that in Deuteronomy 6 also. It says, any meditated there and day and day night. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> That's how you talk about being a teacher. When you teach, you want to get, get a material down, you want to learn something, teach it. Once you teach it, you're going to have it down way better than if you just learn it. It's just different. Teaching just makes you, it just, you, first of all, you have to know it better. And then it just makes it so you remember it once you teach it. And you get better at it. And you realize things while you're teaching. Teaching's powerful. Teaching the word of God. It should be in your mouth. Speak of it. Tell people what you learned. Speak about the word of God. You remember what you talk about. You remember what you teach. You remember what you studied and taught to somebody else. I think one of the funny verses in the Bible, it says, if a woman wants to learn, let her ask her husband, her husband at home. That, after many, many years of pastoring, that verse really amuses me. Nobody else probably amuses, but it amuses me. It doesn't say ask your spiritual husband. It doesn't say your husband knows the answer. It doesn't say ask him at church. Hey, honey, what's that mean? Why? Because he's going to say, go ask the pastor. I don't know. But when he has to answer it and she says honey can you tell me what's the what's the what are the toes in in daniel chapter two she's gonna say you know honey i've been thinking about that let me pray about that i'm gonna get back i'm a little busy right now but tomorrow i'll get back to you and then he's gonna go study and he's gonna try to figure it out and try to try why he'll have to learn and and it's it's not at church and so, ask him why. Because he's going to learn. He's going to grow because he's going to teach. He's got to study, and then he's got to teach it to his wife. And, and that he'll step up spiritually. It's good for him. And he does that. And it's good for him. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 5. Teach the word of God to somebody. You don't have to know everything. You know, there's somebody who knows less than you about the Bible. And find that person and tell them. And you know what you just do sometimes? Just say, the person at work, just the person who doesn't even want to know, say, look, I've been learning something of the Bible. Can I just teach it to you? They say no. They say no. Go teach a kid. Go tell somebody who, who doesn't know much. Tell some new Christian and teach them. Go up to somebody in church and say, can I teach, tell you what I learned this week? And teach them. They might already know it. Teach me. I don't care. Maybe I'll learn something. Uh, man, sometimes out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, maybe Christians come up with some pretty cool stuff. I'm like, whoa, man. You're going to put me out of business if we let you preach. And, uh, and, and, and because they, God's speaking to you. And God's giving you truth. Hebrews chapter 5, uh, back, back where we were in verse 12. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles, the oracles of God. And such to become need of milk and not of strong meat. Teach other people. Look at verse 14. But strong meat... Belong unto them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. By reason of use. You used it. You weren't a forgetful hearer who saw it and then walked away and forgot what manner of man he was. It's important that we do that. We're going to get skillful in the word if, word if we get um, the basics down and live what we've been 
taught. Start with those things. If we have time in the word, under time, day and night, meditate, study, um, being taught, uh, hearing preaching, searching the scriptures, reading, all these things are part of it. And then teaching what we've learned. Man, if you do these things, you can get skillful in the word pretty quick. And you know what? Once you're, and, and, and man, if you grew up in a good home where you learned the Bible, you have knowledge you don't know you know because you've not used it. You need to go use it. Go teach somebody something. I can't get to everybody. But you can know the Bible better than me. You can learn. And you know what? You've grown. You've learned something, right? Go tell that to somebody. You'd be surprised how somebody's like, wow. Man, I've never known. I didn't know you knew the Bible like this. Because the average guy in the street doesn't know anything. They don't know the Bible at all. You know, they're, 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 they don't know. And so you're, you're gonna teach, you think you don't know much, but you do. And read your Bible every day. And spend time. And man, your mind gets inundated with Scripture. And you get sanctified the truth of the Word of God. But you got to spend the time daily. And you'll be surprised how much you'll know. You'll be surprised how much all of a sudden you will, somebody will come up to you or you'll go up to somebody and God will say, hey, I can use you. You're a workman. You're approved. And now you don't need to be ashamed. And all of a sudden words and things you've learned that you forgot you even learned and scriptures you didn't know you memorized because you didn't. And all of a sudden they start coming out of you because God is using you because now you're a workman because you prepared yourself. And now God's using you. And now you have Bible knowledge. And now you're skillful in the word. Not, oh no, I'm going to be taught again this. Yeah, because you never did it. You never did it. And, and, and you're, not, you're not living what God's already shown you. And you're unskillful in the word. So let's go back to basics. Come to church every Sunday. Read your Bible every day. Here's how you pray. Don't steal. Don't kill. Don't commit adultery. Don't lie. <sighs> I want something deeper. <laughs> you haven't lived the shallow yet. Here you go. Baba. <laughs> I want a steak. Oh, steaks are for those who already drank their bottles and grew and lived it. That's not for you. You're not going to get a steak. You haven't drank your bottle. I'm not going to shove a big hunk of meat in a two-month-old mouth. Right? I'm going to save that for when they're mature. They can handle it. So there's some one, the scripture is amazing. I can't wait to learn more. I need to learn more. I'm amazed at what's in here. I'm constantly learning. And, and I've been reading this book for every day for 38 years. Went to Bible college. Me memorized, meditate, preach it a th how many thousands of times. And I still go to it going, man, that is so awesome. I can't wait to preach that. Because this is the word of God. Amen? Who wants to become more skillful in the word? All right. Well, now you know how. But doesn't, the devil's not going to make it easy. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to give you something else you've got to do. Amen? So be skillful and uh, let God use you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the Bible. I pray that we'd become skillful in the word. Such as have uh, need of meat, not milk. Many people that uh, we... Um, are able to discern both good and evil by the exercising thereof. I pray we'd be a meat church, a, a church that can go out and give the milk to the babes and give the meat to the mature and go out and feed people. Lord, may we be workmen that need not to be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. He that uses milk is unskillful in the word because he is a babe. May that not be us, Lord. I pray that we'd have that time in the word. I pray we'd live and learn uh, what you give us, Lord. I pray we teach it to somebody else. And may we get skillful. May we get immersed in Scripture. I thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the truth of it. It's beautiful and wonderful. And I pray you'd use it in our lives. In Jesus' name.